The name of the movie is The Last Castle. The prison warden watches the prisoners from behind the glass of his office. Then the office secretary enters to him and tells him that there is a new criminal who will be deported to their prison. And the prison warden asks her to give this prisoner's file to Captain Pertz. But she tells him that he is a class a criminal. He asks her to give him this prisoner's file so that he can see it. Then Captain Pertz contacts the specialists, and after completing the communication with them, he goes to the prison warden, confirms the news to him, and tells him that this prisoner will come to the prison today. The prison warden is surprised because he knows that the trial of this person was also today. So how could they implement the sentence so quickly? Captain Pertz informs the prison warden that this prisoner has confessed his guilt and they sentenced him to 10 years in prison. And they accelerated the sentencing procedures because they were flattering him because of his history. The prison warden was mocking what Captain Pertz said and telling him that if they wanted to compliment him they should have named a military base after him and not sent him to this prison. He also tells Captain Pertz that they should be careful with him. Then we see the arrival of the prison car, and all the prisoners were waiting to see General Irwin. The prisoners bet that Irwin will not be able to stay in this place, and that he will hang himself within a week. Irwin arrives at the prison with the guards, wearing his military uniform. Irwin turns in his personal belongings, and the female employee allows him to keep his daughter's and grandson's pictures and the military academy seal. Then he goes under the guard of Captain Pertz to meet the warden. We see the prison warden wearing his military uniform and looking at himself. And when Irwin comes and stands in front of the warden, the prison warden asks Irwin and he says that you must be thinking now which of US should give the military salute and also tell him that the military salute is not allowed between prisoners and then he asks Irwin to sit with him. So the warden introduces him to the prison sections and he tells him that the building they are in is the administration building and he tells him about another building which is the building in which the prisoners are located and in which Irwin will live. Irwin asked the warden about a broken wall near the prison wall. The prison warden informs him that this wall is old and that this wall is what remains of the old prison building, which was built in 1870. The warden tells Irwin that he didn't remove what was left in order to preserve a piece of the old prison's history. The prison warden asks Irwin to sign a book for Irwin, which he owns in the office, so Irwin agrees. When the warden goes to get the book, Irwin sees antique bullets and an old sword that the warden kept. Irwin grabs the items and tells Captain Pertz that not everyone who has a collection of these items knows their value. When the warden hears this, he gets upset and throws the book away, telling Irwin that he didn't find the book. Then he takes the sword from Irwin and returns it to its place. Then Irwin comes out of the prison warden's office and meets one of the prisoners and gives the military salute to Irwin. But the prisoner's warden gets angry and tells the prisoner that Irwin now has no military rank and that he forbids saluting between prisoners. But the prisoner tells the warden that the military salute was his, not Irwin's. Then the guards take Irwin to the cell and the first thing Irwin saw was that the guards were taking a prisoner and it seemed they were going to hit. Captain Pertz explains the prison rules to Irwin. He tells him that the area they are in now is an area where prisoners are allowed to walk during the day only and tells him that he is allowed to have one book in his cell in addition to the Bible and he also tells him that visits are allowed once a week on Mondays. Then Captain Pertz enters Irwin into the cell. On the second day in the morning, there was a quarrel between prisoners in the prison yard. As usual, Yates takes advantage of this and makes bets among the prisoners on who will win the fight. General Irwin was watching what was happening and was surprised because the guards did not intervene to break up the fight and he also witnessed that the prison warden also watched the fight and did nothing. When tools were used for the fight, the prison warden asked Captain Pertz to intervene to break up the fight. Captain Pertz gives orders over the walkie-talkie. 
The siren sounds and we see all the prisoners lie on the ground, including General Irwin. When one of the prisoners refused to lie on the ground, the prison guards beat him with rubber bullets, and the guards took him away. In the scene, we see the prisoners in the laundry room, and there was the general, who seemed tired. In the prison yard, Akilar, who was a somewhat weak person, was working in building the prison wall. So one of the strong prisoners beat Akilar and told him not to interfere in the work of building the prison wall because this work is for men for the strong. We noticed there was General Irwin watching what happened. In the dining room, General Irwin was dining alone. Then one of the prisoners comes to sit with the general, and this prisoner starts talking and tells the general that he certainly does not remember him and tells him that he had served under his command in the Gulf. But the general knew this person and also knew that he was a doctor. A number of prisoners come to sit with General Irwin. One of the prisoners calls Irwin General, but Irwin tells him not to call him General again, because he is no longer a general. Someone asks Irwin about the people he knows at the Pentagon, but Irwin denies knowing anyone from the Pentagon. One of the prisoners tells Irwin that what happened today in prison is happening frequently and that they are being treated badly and violence is being used against them. The doctor tells Irwin that this year 13 people were injured, 11 of whom were seriously ill. Irwin tells the prisoners that in war things are much more difficult than in prison. He tells them that they are no longer soldiers and that he is not a general now. Then he asks them if there have been murders, and one of the prisoners tells him that there have been two killings of prisoners. But they cannot prove that, and he also told him that there are experienced snipers firing rubber bullets from a village. General Irwin tells them that he doesn't want to play the lead again and that he just wants to serve his sentence without trouble so he can go home. In the prisoner's hall, we see that Yates is collecting bets from the prisoners, and the bet was that the general would commit suicide. Yates goes to the general's cell and tells him he saw him at the White House with his father when they were honoring retired soldiers. On the day of the visit, Rosalie comes to visit her father, and she tells him that there is no purpose in her visiting him, and that there is nothing to talk about. Irwin asks her if he was intimidating because he was a tough military leader, but she tells him that he was not a perfect father, then tells him that he is a great man and what she did for their country is great. Irwin asks his daughter to send him letters and tells her he loves her. In the prison yard, Akilar approaches the general and salutes him, assuring the general that he was with him in the military. The warden is in the office and watches General Irwin tell Captain Pertz that at the War Academy this general had a high status, and now he's befriending the weakest guy in the prison. The warden asks Captain Pertz to punish Akilar for saluting the general. At night, we see Akilar standing in the rain as he performs the military salute, and he remains like this until the morning, and this was a punishment for him. When the general saw him, he went to him and asked him to stop saluting. But one of the guards hits Akilar and he falls to the ground. Then the siren sounds and all the prisoners lie on the ground. The warden and Captain Parrots come to the prison yard and when the warden learns what happened, the warden tells the general that he knows he was a leader and finds it difficult for him to accept that others have not followed him but he must know that he is now in prison and that he will not allow any breach to happen. General Irwin informs the warden that according to the prison punishment code, he is not allowed to punish a prisoner for two days in a row. The warden thanks Irwin for telling him this, and the warden speaks to a guard, after which the guard talks to the general and tells him that the prisoner punishment law allows any prisoner who assaults the guards to be punished. And there was a punishment for the general, which is to move the prison wall stone to another place. General Irwin looked exhausted and tired as the other prisoners watched. One of the prisoners says that the stone is very heavy and that the general will not be able to move this stone on his own. Yates collects the bet.
The bet was whether the general could continue to move the stone or not. The warden of the prison was watching what was happening. Then the doctor asks the general to drink water because his body will be dehydrated because of the sun. The doctor asks the guard to allow the general to take off his shirt. When the general takes off his shirt, the prisoners notice the scars on his back as a result of his participation in the wars. One of the prisoners tells them that the general was a prisoner for six years in one of the countries, and after four years had passed, they offered him to return to his country, but he refused and stayed with his men for six years. The prisoners were trying to cheer General Irwin up. The general fell while carrying the last rock. The doctor examined him and made sure of his health. Then the general returned to put the rock in its place. The warden gives an order that the general move the rock to its place and then put him in solitary confinement. The prison warden comes to the general and tells him that the reason for his punishment was to make it clear to the prisoners that the general is a prisoner like them. When the general leaves, he meets the prisoners and tells them that this wall is for them and not for the warden. Then he asks them to ask Akilar about the correct way to build the wall because he has experience in building. Then the prisoners demolish the fence. The warden knew that the general had ordered the prisoners to tear down the wall. After the prisoners finish building the wall again, the prisoners demand that Akilar write his name on the wall first. The captain confirms to the prison warden that the prisoners have started calling out to each other according to the rank of each person. The warden tells them he knows the general wants to lead them. The prison warden informs the general that the prisoners are dangerous and that they used to kill the officers because their number is few. He tells him that managing the prison is more difficult than the wars the general fought. We see an armored car entering to destroy the wall built by the prisoners. The siren sounds and the prisoners lie on the ground, except for Akilar, who stands in front of the car. The warden gives the order to shoot rubber bullets, and Akilar is hit and killed. On the second day, the general speaks to the prisoners and asks them to make a funeral worthy of Akilar. The warden orders the siren to sound, but none of the prisoners lie on the ground. After the warden enters the general, the general tells him that the prisoners want the warden to resign. The warden summons General Wheeler and informs him that Irwin is mentally ill. But General Wheeler asks him not to talk about Irwin that way because General Irwin was Wheeler's captain. Wheeler tells Irwin he's getting him out of jail with a medical excuse. But Irwin refuses and asks him to open an investigation into Akilar's murder. The warden receives a letter saying that Irwin is going to kidnap Wheeler. The prison warden declares a state of emergency in the prison. But then the prison warden learns that nothing is happening and that it was all a hoax. General Wheeler warns the warden that if he kills someone else in the prison he will be dismissed and also tells him that if he is unable to run the prison he will transfer General Irwin. But the warden of the prison assures the general that he will be able to take control of the prison. Then, in the dining room, the prisoners ask the general what they will do next. The general asks a group of prisoners about the means of defense in the prison, but as soon as Yates arrives, the rest of the prisoners refuse to speak to him. The warden was watching and called for Yates to come into the office. The warden told Yates that he would reduce his sentence from three years to three months if he spied for him. Yates agrees. The general speaks to the prisoners and tells them that they will take over the prison. Yates was watching. Then the general explains the plan and how to control the castle. The general informs Yates that he knows the warden has appointed him as his spy and asks him not to be such a bad guy. Yates asks the warden to release him tomorrow because if the prisoners find out that he betrayed them, they will kill him. But the warden tells him that he will be released after a week. Then they hear a voice outside the office, and this voice was of someone who was angry at Yates for spying on them. Then Yates asks the warden to give him two days to find out the general's plan. And then when Yates returns to the prison warden, he tells him that the prisoners want to take over the prison, 
and then they raise the flag upside down. The prison warden does not find the flag, and Yates tells him that he stole the flag, so they put Yates in solitary confinement. Then the guards take the prisoners out of the prison to search them. This is exactly what the general wanted, but the guards did not find the flag, and the prison warden knew that there was a trick. So he asked the guards to go out to the prison yard, but before that, the prisoners had locked the doors with an iron chain. The warden asks to call for support. The prisoners lock the remaining guards in solitary confinement. And then the prisoners burn sniper towers. The general speaks on the radio with the warden of the prison and tells him that the command of the prison is now his. Then the prisoners take out a primitive catapult and smash the warden's desk against a rock. Then they take out an oxygen cylinder and destroy another observation tower. The first boulder that falls on the warden's desk will have the name Okilar on it. Then a Molotov cocktail is thrown at the warden's desk, and the desk burns down. Then the prisoners take over the prison's emergency car. Then General Wheeler calls the prison administration and informs them that he will arrive in 20 minutes at the prison, and that there will be support forces with him. After the helicopter arrives, in which a person was shooting rubber bullets at the prisoners, Yates helps the prisoners to board the helicopter and hits the pilot and the soldier as he seizes it, and destroys the third control tower through it, and then the helicopter falls, but the general can save Yates at the last moment. After that, we see the prison warden leaving the prison yard, and there were snipers in the prison. So the prison warden asks the prisoners to lie down on the ground, but the prisoners refuse to do so. The warden tells the general that if they don't lie on the ground, he will order the snipers to shoot them. Indeed, the general orders them to lie down on the ground. The prison warden asks the general to give him the flag, but the general refuses. Then the general goes to raise the flag, so the prison warden gives orders to shoot the general, but the snipers refuse to do so. When the general raised the flag, the warden of the prison shot the general, but Captain Parrots arrested the warden, and we watch the general while he is still raising the flag. The warden and the prisoners notice that the flag was not upside down. Then the general dies, and here the movie ends. Thanks for watching.